Okay, so here it is. Here's our huge clock in the sky. And it is, of course, the stars. And it's once we put on the equatorial grid, it doesn't look very much different to my animation of a clock. Let's remind ourselves, first of all, where the first point of Aries is. The, the red line is the ecliptic. The dark blue line is the celestial equator. And where they cross is the first point of Aries. If we draw a line, which is the pale blue line, from the northern celestial pole to the first point of Aries, then this is the hour hand of our celestial clock. I find it useful to remember that if you look at the constellation Cepheus and you look at the tip of the house, that kind of house shape there, and you look at Cassiopeia, which is the W shape, and you imagine a line from Polaris, which kind of skirts in between them, then that is the hour hand of our celestial clock. That points to the first point of Aries. So going back to our celestial clock, and hopefully you can see Cassiopeia and you can see Cepheus and you'll have figured out where this line is, where the first point of Aries is. First of all though, um, this line is the observer's meridian, which is a, a, a vertical line which goes through the northern celestial pole. It's actually a, a circle on the celestial sphere. This is our, or rather the observer's meridian. Let's add in the line now going to the first point of Aries and basically the, the local sidereal time for this observer is the angle between these two lines. It's the angle between the observer's meridian and the first point of Aries. That is your local sidereal time. On this particular diagram, the local sidereal time is 4 hours and 20 minutes. Now, something important to consider. If you look at this diagram here, imagine you go out on the night time and you look at the stars at exactly midnight and the stars are in the position that we can see here. Now, Two weeks later, you go out at midnight and the position of the stars has changed. This is two weeks later. They've kind of moved on by about an hour. And then another two weeks later, they've moved on by about another hour. So what's happening here is the fact that it takes less than 24 hours for the Earth to rotate. Okay, the hour and the hour hand of the celestial clock is a line connecting the northern celestial pole to the first point of Aries. Uh, notice the symbol for the first point of Aries looks like the, the horns of a ram. And if we draw a line from the NCP to the first point of Aries. This is the hour hand of our celestial clock. Our local sidereal time is the hour angle of the first point of Aries. Basically, it's how far round it's gone in hours and minutes. I'm going to do another video about hour angles, the hour angles of stars, because I found it a little bit tricky. I'd like to talk a bit more about it. It took me a while to get my head round our angles. Now, this is important. I can imagine this coming up on a, an exam question. A star culminates when its right ascension is equal to the local sidereal time. Looking at this diagram here, the local sidereal time is 4 hours and 20 minutes. And if a star has a right ascension of 4 hours 20 minutes, then it will culminate, it will transit your upper meridian 
at a sidereal time of 4 hours and 20 minutes. Your local sidereal time and your mean solar time are different. They are totally different things. Why? Because the Earth takes 23 hours and 56 minutes to rotate, then the sky will appear to rotate every 23 hours and 56 minutes. And that means that every 24 hours, it will rotate more than 360 degrees. It will rotate about one degree or four minutes more than. Okay, and then after a, a whole year, which is 365 times four minutes, you'll, you'll end up back where you started from. Then lastly, your local sidereal time depends on your longitude. Just as your mean solar time depends on your longitude, so does your local sidereal time. East of where you are, you would add on four minutes for every degree. West of where you are, you would subtract four minutes for every degree. For example, if you're two degrees west of Greenwich, then your local sidereal time will be eight minutes behind Greenwich sidereal time. Mm -hmm.